Why do you think Europe lacks a lot of skyscrapers? Even though it is one of the most developed, populous, and economically successful continents, hello and welcome to Z. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. The lack of skyscrapers in Europe is startling, especially when contrasted to North America and Asia. 66% of the 218 skyscrapers that have been built on the continent to date are situated in urban areas. In just five cities, Moscow, London, Paris, and Frankfurt. Why then, do other significant European cities not accept the skyscraper? Why do they prosper? Without the enormous floor sizes and inner urban space that these ingenious buildings offer and is everything about to alter in our world that is becoming more urbanized when skyscrapers first gained popularity in the 19th century initially in Chicago and then elsewhere many European towns were already well established with majestic architecture when New York was founded historic structures and public areas that limited the space for new massive structures at that time the majority of European cities had more evenly distributed zones and did not face strong demand for floor space and prime locations, which frequently promotes the construction of high rises. Additionally, as North America's influence and power increased, a cultural conflict arose. Between Americans who believed that the class system in Europe was outmoded and Europeans who believed that some American values were destroying European customs and traditions. As a result, each continent was reluctant to absorb the ideas of the others. Europe strove to protect its history, while North America sought to set the standard for a new era. This helps to explain why skyscraper building didn't initially take off in Europe, but describe the reasons why the continent has lagged since. Many believe that after the Second World War, European towns would modernize and copy the skyscrapers that were going up all around North America. But in Western Europe, where a lot of cities lost iconic and historic buildings, a strong want to rebuild what had been destroyed developed. Additionally, due to Europe's reduced population at the time, there was a greater need for floor there wasn't a region that is mostly responsible for skyscraper development. Therefore, modest buildings took the place of those that couldn't be rescued or renovated. The expanding Soviet Union's reconstruction efforts in Eastern Europe, meanwhile, included of consisting mainly of mid-rise, repetitive buildings intended to accommodate the majority of the population. It was around this time that Europe started to see the construction of its first skyscrapers, not in response to as an effort by the Soviets to demonstrate their dominance and influence as opposed to progress and prosperity. Even while Brussels has never built a true skyscraper, it is somewhat to blame for that there aren't many skyscrapers on the continent.
The 1960s saw a lot of buildings without any significant zoning laws in effect. The city was destroyed to make space for massive, contemporary structures that didn't care about either an aesthetic or cultural value. Many people became aware of the harm this indiscriminate redevelopment was causing to the city. The word Brusselization was created by well-known individuals and architects who pushed for its introduction. New planning regulations the size of new buildings was severely constrained by these limitations and historic restored facades must be included into new construction, retaining the cultural structure of the city. After the incident in Brussels, many people in Europe developed a general distaste towards modern structures, deeming them uninteresting or soulless. In response, many cities implemented comparable rules and created regulated districts, like law defense in Paris to prevent high-rise construction in historic districts. By the beginning of the 21st century, opinions about towering structures were changing worldwide. Architectural styles shifted away from box-like structures and toward more designs that are distinctive and as globalization increased. Major financial hubs including London, Paris, Moscow, Istanbul, and Frankfurt have existed since the early 2000s have seen a number of skyscrapers develop as urban centers need for business space has grown. Smaller European cities, on the other hand, have seen more moderate expansion and have turned their attention is on protecting the environment and raising citizen living standards. Urban areas in Scandinavia and Central Europe have routinely placed high in recent years. Among the best in the world for long-term viability, contentment, and well-being while preserving inside their respective national economies. However, the construction of skyscrapers in modern cities is no longer solely motivated by economic factors. Expansion or the requirement for professional office space by 2030, metropolitan areas will be home to 60% of the world's population, making residential skyscrapers are currently becoming more prominent, especially in Asia and North America. Millions are moving into cities as traditional rural industries become automated. Metropolis and other large urban regions are generating up demand for frequently scarce residential space. High-rise buildings were encountered. Europe is not immune to this problem, especially in such a globally interconnected and technologically advanced society. The aspiration of the continent to match the development and economic expansion of China and the U.S. As a result, Europe may experience a surge of skyscrapers in the coming decades. But now that entire cities have been designated as historically significant and with the stronghold of the desire to preserve as much culture and architecture as feasible currently, the one-of-a-kind obstacle to upcoming skyscraper construction in Europe is all to handle the past. If you liked this video and want to see more from the best video channel, click here. The B1M can be subscribed to for construction.